Hey ADF fans, in this video I want to walk you through designing data flows that are going to dedupe data. So we're going to pull out some distinct rows out of your data in a few different ways very easily right here in the designer. And then I'm going to show you how to copy and paste snippets of transformation code that allow you to do those deduping distinct rows and how to reuse that code both in ADF and in Synapse Analytics. So let's jump right in, have some fun. I have a Dataflow canvas already primed on my screen and in it I have my movies CSV source data. So this is a delimited text file with data about movies and their ratings. And what I've done is I've duplicated it one, two, three additional times by using new branch. So I've clicked on the transformation after my source and said new branch. This will allow me to duplicate that same source data a total of four times and be able to work with it in four different ways. Each one of these streams, each one of these rows is a different stream, and I can work on the data in different ways. And so in each one of these, I am deduping data. Let's take a quick peek at the data first under data preview for the source. Any of those branches you click on, you get the same results because they're all pointing back to the same source. They're essentially just references back to that same data. And so you say I have data, uh, I have my movies data here. If you look over the far right hand side of the data preview at the bottom, you do see the total number of rows. Now I actually have over 9,000 rows in my source data, but the data preview is only showing me 1,000. And that's because under debug settings, the default is 1,000 rows. So I can change that. Let's bump this up to 10, uh, let's do 100,000. So you can change this per source in your uh, uh, data flow. Now when we refresh, Data Factory will go ahead and query uh, and limit the results to 100,000. So I should see about 9,000 rows coming back from that source data. And there it is, 9,128. Now this is all only at design time. This is only this is not available to your runtime. So if you want to persist this data or you want to just keep the count, the row count, a row count is a very simple uh, transformation to add. You use an aggregation for that. So go down here to my third row. Now notice after uh, this um, branch right here, the one that I'm pointing to, I added a select transformation. Now the select transformation in this case is not doing anything. I'm just using it just to alias the stream. So I give it a new stream name called original data. I'm leaving all the mappings the same at the bottom. I'm just aliasing it so I know that this is original data. And I just add a row count. So now I can persist the number of rows that are in my original data. And I do that through the aggregate transformation. I say don't group by anything. Essentially uh, count all of the rows in the entire original data set. The aggregate then is just count one. So that'll give me the count. It's essentially doing a select count uh, across your data set if you were working with SQL. So if I go to data preview here, we'll see the aggregate results, which we saw was 9,128 for the total number of rows when I look at the data preview on the source. So I should see that row count show 9,128 here. And indeed that is the result I get, but notice the total number of rows in this transformation now is just one because the only re thing I'm returning is the aggregate count. Great, so now I want to make sure that my data is cleansed of any duplicate data. I only want the distinct rows. So let's go through three different ways to do that. I'm gonna start with probably the easiest, and that is this one down here at the bottom. And this row right here called distinct rows. This is an aggregate as well, and I'm grouping by the movie. The movie column in my data is the primary key. So this is how you would pull out um, or look for duplicates in data based on the primary key. The only way this is going to find duplicates is if that primary key is duplicated. It doesn't matter what the rest of the columns have in it. If there's more than one movie or uh, movie ID of the same ID, it will take it out because it's grouping that. Now what you do then is in the aggregate, you make a choice. You say, do you want the first occurrence or the last occurrence to remain? Because it could be many uh, duplicates found, many matches. So I'm just, I just happen to pick first. It's arbitrary in my case for my demo use case. Now I'm using a column pattern here, so I clicked on the plus sign and I said add new column pattern. What that does, it allows me to say then to take all of the columns that are not named movie. So this is going to give me all the columns. I'm saying dollar dollar over here in the column name, which means um, retain the original column name. Dollar dollar is the equivalency of saying this within a programming language. And I'm saying give me the first value that you find for that column. So what that's going to end up doing is taking all the columns. The reason why I'm not just saying true here, give me star all the columns is because I already have the column named movie in my group by and Data Factory will bark at that saying that it is a duplicate column name. So now if I look at my inspect on the inputs, 
I have movie, title, genre, year, rating, run tomato, and on the output I have all the same columns, so I'm good to go. Look at my data preview, and what we should see here now, because this is again an aggregate transformation, is we're going to see that there are now 9,125 total rows in here, okay? So the aggregate in this case maintains the original set of columns. I don't need to do a self-join afterwards because I said give me all of the columns of the column pattern. So it doesn't matter what columns are coming in now, as long as I have a movie uh, primary key ID, this will work. Now afterwards I did a, again, I, I added a row count, the uh, no group by and the aggregate of count one, just so I can get that row count. And of course this count will now be 9,125, so I can write that to a file. What I also did here was I, I branched off of that distinct rows to duplicate that and write the output to a file. Uh, but we're not gonna worry about the sync output here in this, uh, in this demo, this is just working through the different ways to work in the designer and get distincts or distinct counts, I think sounds better than distincts. All right, so let's go to um, maybe the next level of complexity within um, distinct rows. And hopefully you're seeing this is fairly easy to work with. I'm gonna then take some of these snippets and show you how easy it is to add uh, row counts and uh, distinct uh, transformations into um, your other data flows, including in Synapse. So this one I'm going to go to, uh, that's called, um, the next one I'm gonna go to is called distinct all columns. So instead of only saying that I only want to find duplicates based on the ID column, I want to look for any data that is duplicated only across every single column. So every column has to match for this to be considered a duplicate. So this is just really taking out anything that's completely duplicated uh, row by row. Now I'm doing that by um, using a computer column instead of a column name. And my computer column is an expression uh, using the SHA2 function so I can hash it. And I'm using, use, I'm saying use 256 and I'm using this special function within uh, data factories, data flow, and uh, metadata um, capabilities. This is a meta function. Columns will give you the value of every column that is in that stream. And so when I do that, this is gonna essentially give me a hash of all of the columns, all the values. And so what I say is anytime that um, these are identical, these are grouped, I will then be able to pick out just the first occurrence of it. So I give this an alias, call it my calls. And in the aggregates, I, instead of, um, removing that group by column because uh, the group by column is called my calls. I, I don't need to because that's not duplicated. This is a brand new column name. So I just say true. Give me every column coming in. Now it won't matter. You can take this snippet, this transformation, and you can apply this and copy and paste this into your data flow today and it'll work because I am uh, caring nothing at all about column names. This, these are all meta functions. I'm saying true for so every column, keep the original name the same and give me the first occurrence of the value in the column. So let's take a look at what the results are going to be. You're gonna see all the same data. I actually don't think I have any completely duplicated rows in my data. I only had some Easter eggs there around duplicate um, IDs. So we saw three of those rows were taken out, taken out and some of the titles are duplicated in here as well. And so it's, there you see the fingerprint, the hash for all of the columns in the data. All of the data flows through the aggregate to the other side, to the output, and you will see that there are 9,128, which is the same uh, number as we're coming in. So no total duplicates. And then I just add a row count at the end, just again to um, serialize or to persist the row count. Last one I wanna show you is if you want a fuzzy match. So let's say that you uh, have, like I said, I have some duplicate movie titles in my data. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, uh, that's fine, let's pick a couple of columns in here and let's create a hash on it. So I'm gonna hash uh, three different columns, the movie ID, the year, and we're gonna use a soundx of the title. So this is gonna create that soundx value for the title, the string title, that we will find uh, and we'll match titles that sound the same. Okay, so let's save and finish this. And this will give me things if, if um, titles were uh, mistyped or misspelled. I'm gonna call my uh, group by column as calls fuzzy. The aggregate is exactly the same, true for all the columns. So again, this will work for any set of data as long as you have these columns you can set for your fuzzy match. Keep all the columns the same and give me the first occurrence. So what do we get here? Let's have a look to see what we get. Now these, uh, this data does have some Easter eggs to match fuzzy um, lookups, fuzzy matching. I believe I have faulty towers and there are a number of times spelled slightly differently and things of that nature. Okay, so it looks like, yeah, it looks like two of those uh, movies were taken out because they had fuzzy match. Uh, they had similar sounding names and everything else. Uh, those other columns I was checking, the movie ID and the year were identical as well. 
All right, now let's say that we want to use some of these techniques in other data flows that we already have. Very easy to do. Let me show you how to do that by working with the script. So before I do, let me just show you that there is a, um, a document that we have, a web page, and I'll put the link to this in the description for the video with what we call um, snippets. So there are um, script snippets that you can uh, copy and paste right from here. And you can add these to your data flows. We have aggregated summary stats, um, including all columns in the aggregate, which is what I've been showing here today for you. Creating the row hash fingerprint, I also showed you that. String ag, some others, and there's the distinct row using all columns, which was also one of the demos I showed. I'll tell you what, let's actually take that one. So I'm gonna copy this right from here. Now if you, you can copy from our snippet library or you can just um, take your own transformations, your own logic, and you can copy. The way you're gonna do that is go into the script. And in the script, uh, you'll be able to see the script behind for the uh, your graph, your mapping, and uh, this is actually called data flow script. So, uh, for example, the distinct rows, that's the row count distinct, I'll do this one in a second, is actually right here. So we just copy and paste that. But before I do, let's take the copy and paste I already have, and let's put that into a into Synapse Analytics and a data flow there. So uh, data flows in ADF are all contained also within Synapse Analytics. And let me take this um, Synapse Studio I have open with this data flow, which is um, taking in a JSON source, flattening out two different hierarchies, two different arrays, and then taking that data into a folder in ADLS. Let me take this and let's add a um, uh, distinct row into this. So what I'll do is I'll go to the script. Let's go to that last flatten, the final flatten which is right here. You can tell that because it is called flatten2. So you look for tilde greater than the name of the transformation. I'm gonna put an enter in there to give myself some new space. I'm gonna copy and paste that aggregate right in there. Now what you have to do is you just put the name of your previous transformation in front, flatten2. Okay, so flatten2 is feeding into this aggregate, which I'm calling distinct rows. Now the, the transformation ready incoming stream two distinct rows. And I couldn't quite get to the OK button, but there we go. So now we have a distinct rows transformation that was added. Because everything is generic, you have no errors. Everything is, is valid. And in the sync, we have auto mapping, which means everything is still perfectly valid within your data flow. So that's how you can use snippets and copy and paste your code. Let's also add a, um, let's add a row count now into that as well. That's nice. So let's go back over to this data flow and data factory. We'll take the row count over here going to go into the script transformation look for row count dist uh, we'll use this is fine we'll use this one right here go to the um, the transmission type which is aggregate uh, recording button there we go and over in synapse we'll go back to the script and we'll go right after that uh, distinct rows and we'll add an account so distinct rows is here add in a count uh, the incoming stream uh, the incoming transformation is distinct rows Aggregate is called row count distinct. Let me take out some of that space, space. And we just have to say that the incoming, I call it distinct rows. I just realized that. Distinct rows. And the incoming is called row count distinct. And there we go. And yes, I can. So now we have added a row count as well to it. And again, it's not accessing any particular column names, so it works with no problem. Okay, so that's how you can uh, reuse some code and you can easily add deduping into your data transformations with Azure Data Factory's data flows. Till next time.